G'day YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear's Shed. Well the weather report, I just had a look on my, on my little phone app and it looks like um, 11 to 22 today in Bundy and look the days have been lovely. Um, last few mornings we've had a little bit of fog and with a little bit of fog you usually get a nice day, no breeze. So. Um, so yeah, it's, it's Monday morning, it's oh, about quarter to six in the morning and, and I thought I'd come in the little shipping container here and um, yeah, get the, get the stew knocked out early this morning then I can get back up the shed and have a fiddle. Um, we've had quite a, um, oh, probably quite a, quite a um, uh, productive, I suppose, <laughs> weekend despite a few things um, running amuck on us a little bit. Um, just over from us here in Bundaberg, like, um, at, at Branyan, um, the river comes up in Branyan, then there's a, a there's a big hook, and it's called Sandy Hook. Well, we live near to there, and um, once or twice a year they have the powerboat racing there, and they have these bloody big V8s, and oh, beautiful looking gear, and um, big Chevy motors and blowers on the top, and man, do they go, and. Um, Look, they really get going. They used to have a thing in town here called Bundy Thunder, and and that was a boat racing thing. And they used to have like like these little Formula One boats, and God, they would just scream. I don't know how many revs they were doing, but um, and they just skip across the top. Yeah, <laughs> there wasn't much of them in the water at any one time, but um, uh, they don't call it Bundy Thunder Thunder anymore. Um, uh, but it must have just been a power boat. Um, a race meeting and well because we're so close um, where the where the river comes along and turns well the breeze often comes up and, and we're like a kilometre away I suppose maybe a little bit more but the noise just comes up the valley straight through and um, yeah look I, I got a little bit of filming done early on Saturday morning and about nine o'clock or so the power boat started well that was it for the day no more filming. <laughs> you couldn't do it till late in the evening, and um, so the same yesterday morning. Um, it was a two-day meeting, and um, oh boy, I, I I actually took the um, took the camera out the front of the shed, and I I just held it out there to try and give you an idea. But then um, I did that, and that was about no oh, ten o'clock, eleven o'clock yesterday morning. But then I should have done it again later in the afternoon as the wind turned um, later in the afternoon. Holy! Um, probably one of the finals or something. There were some big boys there, and um, and they were rumbling. And the, when the when the frequency got right, Bundy Bear's shed up the back there would you could hear it just like vibrating in the shed. <coughs> Pardon me. And so look, it was very loud, <laughs> and so not much filming happened then, but. Um, I, I used that time to get organised and you know buff all the bolts and all that sort of thing. So, um, so yesterday morning I hopped up before dark. I hopped up early anyway, and um, I left all the shed doors shut and had the lights on. And I actually got filmed um, setting up the back axle bearings on the one three five six speed. And look, that's. That worked out well, I believe. Um, I've had a couple of looks at the footage. I, I think it'll be okay. I haven't got it rendered yet. Um, we're using our new microphone set up up the shed there, and I, I believe it's going well. Um, I can actually use two cameras, one on each axle, so um, we'll just see how it goes. Um, I, I think it'll be okay. Um, through the week, I got hold of um, my wireless microphone set up, turned up, so... Um, I've actually got one sitting over here with a little microphone up the top and then it just, on top of the camera, there's a, um, um, there's one of these with two aerials so we can bring in two channels if we need to. Not that anyone would want to hear me twice, but, <laughs> um, but what that does, you can, I can pop that on the belt if I want to and this little lavalier microphone, I can poke that somewhere and well, that's us about Lance, hey? I don't have to give myself a bloody good talking to, because when you um, when you got to slide it on your that way, well, the microphone's upside down, isn't it? So, 
anyway that should pop off no worries and if we put it there and turn that around um, that can pop on there and I can bug around up the back there flapping my gums and, and you'll get some idea but um, look what I find best these these are little condenser microphones and but they take the sound in around you a lot um, so what we've what I've worked out is the best setup I believe in the shed with the outside noise that comes through is um, we just have one of these little fellas you've got to have about 18 inches of head pointing down so you don't get the sound behind and we hook one of them into this little jigger here pop him in something like that then that radios the signal straight back to the camera so um, what we're filming the sound or we, we're recording the sound on today is going back um, in mono it's not stereo um, if we wanted stereo um, that's why you can use two microphones and you can use the stereo but um, for what I do I, I don't think stereo would be any better maybe wrong I'll, I'll probably do a test just to have a fiddle really and um, see how we go with that I've got Kelly dog sitting on the office chair behind, behind the camera there again so she's not out chasing kangaroos this morning so um, we'll see how she goes um, through the week also um, and on the end of this stew there'll actually be a bit of machining which I haven't done for a while and it was good to get in and have a fiddle um, the PDO seal on the back of the 135s, the 35s um, they all have the same housing at the back there um, probably 148, some of the 165s, 168 and that they, where the, they have little triangle plate holes of PDO in the back and I've always just got a socket and bash the seal out and, and turned it around. I, I used to have the stuff, but when I sold the shop, um, I let it go with it. And um, so anyway, I found a blob of steel and um, away we went. And um, so, yeah, at the end of this, stew there'll be a bit of turning, which I haven't had for a while. I've all been just buggering around tractors and that. So I got a chance in the shed to um, turn that up. And look, it came out all right. A couple of feeds, I thought, my little lathe. I thought, oh, I'll just hook in here a little bit and... Yeah, a um, bit heavy. <laughs> I shouldn't do that to it. But anyway, um, I, I actually use quite a radius, um, a square, a radius tip. And um, when I go to the triangle on with a small tip, it, it cuts nice and I can pick up my speed. So um, so I've got that there. Um, that'll pop on the end of this week's stew. Um, Saturday morning I, I thought I'd do a bit of film and then my mate Jonesy rolls in and um, he says oh I was talking to you about a um, about a bit of steel a couple of bridge bolts this bloke gave me and I said yeah he says oh I bought you one and he says oh it's, it's about five foot long and so we went and got it and um, yeah look I've, I've got a little bit of footage of that just laying on the floor it's about five foot long two inches around but where it comes on at the um, it, it comes along straight and it looks like it's got a rolled thread at the end. The thread is quite a bit bigger than the bolt. Um, the bolt's not rusted at all, but um, he's, one of his neighbours is in the bridge building team and they go to all the old wooden bridges in the area and they, um, they must renew them all. Yeah, well, obviously, and um, replacing these bolts. But, yeah, you know, a big two-inch bolt and... Um, Look, it appears at the end I've got anyway, it doesn't have any corrosion really. It's still got like a black painted substance on it. Probably a tar from years gone by maybe. Um, but anyway, he bought it to me as a lathe, same as myself, and um, his hobby's doing up stationary engines like mine is too, sort of. I don't do much of that nowadays, I play with tractors way more. So, <clears throat> so Jonesy dropped a little bit of bar up there for us and... Um, some of that stuff I've in the past you know you, you grab a bit of round any old wear and, and you think oh that'll be good for the lathe and and some of that shaft you know the, the old line shafts up in the in the um, old farm sheds you know they had a line shaft running the dairy or um, running the chaff cutter or an industrial workshop um, um, like in Dave's old, old steam powered workshop and I've grabbed some of that old shaft and in the past and I've chucked it in the lathe and spun it up and oh it's bloody tacky stuff yeah it just it doesn't break away cleanly you know you get a bit of 10 
20, 10, 40, something like that, and you, you do a cut and it, it chips away nicely, but it gets um, a little bit claggy. It's um, <clears throat> probably high lead or something in it. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't understand the metallurgy of it all. But, um, <clears throat> but yeah, sometimes this, um, these unknown metals don't turn as nice as um, you'd think so. But Jonesy was saying he had a little bit of this stuff and he reckoned it turned well. But, um, but yeah, like, you know, you really get about um, 4140 in your lathe and you turn it, you can hear the load, it's a bit harder to turn, but, you know, you, you get a better finish and you can heat treat it and all that. But this stuff, it'll just be for, look, the sort of, a lot of the turning I do is making up tools for tractors. So, you know, making up a seal something tool or something like that. So, so yeah, good to have that, good that he thought of me and um, come and saw us. He come and showed me the bore I... I sold him a four horsepower mogul engine a little while ago and he's just had that re-sleeved and he come and showed me that so um, that looks nice too. Um, so far for the week, <coughs> pardon me, a bit of a frog in my throat. Um, so far this weekend, um, like I was saying, I've got the axles done. I've got, um, with the boats there, I've got all the bolts buffed up clean and this morning I'm keen to get up there before the noise and the um, wind starts for the day or the shed starts rattling and creaking um, and I'm ready to sit the gearbox onto the diff housing so that's a major milestone on the job um, we really feel like we're getting somewhere and another interesting thing that that's doing for us is um, it's freed up the stand um, where I did the gearbox up on the engine stand you know you'll recall I could turn it up and round and all that sort of thing. Well, now that's freed that stand up, and um, I can probably go forward with a multi-power gearbox, perhaps the one out of my tractor trekking tractor. And um, yeah, now the stand's free. I can probably split the tractor and do that. Um, putting the gearbox on the diff, I've used that splitting stand that I bought. You know, your two little trolleys. And, oh, look, just a pleasure to use. Um, yeah, look, that, <laughs> it was an expensive stand, but um, yeah, look, it's it's well worth the money when you when you see it. Um, I've got it all set up. I've, I've I haven't put it together. I left a I glued the gasket on yesterday in all the noise, and I buffed every nut and every bolt, and I've I've yeah I've taken quite a bit of time getting things ready. And um, once we do that, once we get the gearbox um, assembled onto the diff, well. That lets us drop the steering box in place, which we've already filmed, and um, a couple of the cross shafts in the, um, I think I had one on my desk here somewhere now, I mention it, um, a couple of the clutch cross shafts um, where the throw out bearing goes, the bushes need to be put in there as yet, and um, and, and then we can move on. Um, I The clutch out of the... Um, Pardon me, a bit of a dicky throat and the sniffles, but I feel good. I don't feel like I've got the log coming on, but anyway, it might be just a damp morning. I've been outside bugging around a bit, and um, yeah, <laughs> we'll see. I shouldn't die, I don't reckon. And um, but yeah, with the um, the clutch in the L one three five six speed, when I pulled it out, it was an aftermarket one, and it was a bit of junk, really. Um, yeah, I. I didn't even film it. It was just rubbish. And I found another dual clutch, and I pulled it apart to see what it's like. And I think that's okay. So um, we may do a video of putting a 911 clutch back together. Um, that's um, nine-inch PDO plate, eleven-inch drive plate. Um, and if we get the clutch and flywheel on, well, it won't be long. We'll have the engine on, and, and we can motor on with that. But it depends. Um, also, with the splitting stands becoming free um, and the tractor being put together the six speed, that means I can probably nick the splitting stands for under the other one. So, um, on the multi power, I've still got a final drive, the left hand final drive, and all has to come out. But there's a couple of rusty bolts in where the where the um, um, where the roll frame is held on through the final drive, and oh, I've got to deal with them. I've been putting it off, and where the, I want to pinch the lift cover off the multi power to put on the six speed, save me doing it up and going to the expense. And um, where a couple of the knuckles are going through, oh, they're giving me a battle as well. So 
Anyway, I used some of the time yesterday when the boats were roaring to get ready for today's filming, so I'm pretty keen to get up there. So, so look, I'll stop chatting. Um, I'll get up the back and do some bloody work instead of talking. Um, I've got a little bit of... I don't know how the sound for the boats will come out over here. I just used the... Um, um, the stand, actually the standard microphone on the camera and I just took it out the front and pointed it in the general direction so whether you see that or not if you can hear it I'll leave it in if you can't hear it very well I won't um, and we'll go over the lathe and start some turning and make our little tool so thanks for watching I'll catch you next week and I'll get up the shed and do some stuff we'll catch you later That's the boats. <laughs> that's the boats out in front of Bundy Bear's shed today. So that's racketing, rattling around the shed. So not much filming's going to go on, but it does give me preparation time. Usually late in the afternoons when the um, when the finals are on, the big boys are playing. Boy, they're loud then. But anyway, it's only once or twice a year, and um, yeah, look, great for the community. I should be down there having a beer, having a look. But anyway, I've got a tractor to put together. Well, look at this for a bolt. My mate Barry come and saw me yesterday and he says, I've got a big bolt out there for you. He says, I've got a couple at home. They're bridge bolts. He says, you might like them for your lathe or that. So I said, yeah, okay. So look at this. That's around five foot long. And look, it looks to be two inch. But the interesting thing to me is, see how at the end there, the thread is far wider. It looks like a rolled thread or something. The thread's far wider, and that's a four inch. Um, I think it's four inch. I haven't measured it. It looks to be about a four inch nut, but yeah, he said, Oh, he said, You use all that up. I've got another couple of them there you can have if you like. So he said, See how you go. I said, Yeah, all right then. So who knows what it's made of. I don't expect it would be high tensile or anything. It'd just be um, probably soft bar. Maybe it can be a bit claggy to um, turn, but oh, there you go.